Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Caleb and this is your crash course on memory allocation in the C programming language. Now a quick mention is if you're in C++, a lot of this will still apply and could be good to know, but it's not really the recommended way of doing things, so I recommend you check out my other video on smart pointers. If you're in C, then this is great. This is going to give you everything to get started with malloc and realloc. Dynamic memory adds a lot of benefits, the first one being it gives us complete control of the memory. This is beneficial if you want to, for example, return data that was created in a function. The second major benefit is it allows us to create things like dynamic arrays, so if you need something that grows in size as the program executes, this is where dynamic memory can come in handy. This and many other concepts will be addressed in my upcoming C and C++ master course, so if that's something you'd be interested in, check out the link down below. So we'll start with the most basic example of using malloc, and what this does is it takes some value, which is the size of memory you want to reserve. So for example, we could use the value 40, and I'll explain what value should go there and how you can calculate it, but let's just first go over some basic usage here. malloc is going to reserve that memory and return a pointer to that location. So we can create a pointer and you can just say void asterisk and give it some name such as array. So now we have a pointer called array pointing to some memory that we allocated using the malloc function. And that's how you allocate memory. You can think of malloc as memory allocation. Now while this works, it's not ideal for two primary reasons. The first one is the size. What do we put there? And the other one is using a void pointer, which is generally frowned upon. So how can we get a stronger type? So for the size, we're going to think about what we might store here. And I'll show you an example how you can calculate the size. For printing a size, you can use the format character LU, and then we'll give it a new line. And then you can use the size of operator, and we'll get the size of an integer, and say we want to store 10 of these. And then I think we'll just want to surround the int here. That just might be an order of operations thing, because it's next to a multiplication. And when we run this, we get the value 40. So if you wanted the ability to store 10 integers, you would need to use the size 40. But what you could do is actually just take this expression here and use that inside of the memory allocation. And then once you know what kind of stuff you're storing in there, in this case integers, you can just change the type of the pointer. So instead of void, we could say int pointer, which is something you can easily do when you're working with a void pointer, which is what malloc returns. So that is the basic setup. So now we have array, which is a pointer to an integer inside of memory that we allocated ourselves. So if this points to a single integer, how do we access the other areas in memory? Well, it's going to look very similar to the way we would work with an array. It just currently points to the first element, but we can access the next one and the next one because they're all going to be next to each other in memory. So let's talk about how we can assign some data to this. Let's just go ahead and clean up our code a little bit. Let's go ahead and use a for loop. For this, let's start i at zero, go until i is less than 10, and then increment i and then we can assign a value to array of i, the same way you would typically work with an array, and assign it the value of i. So we should basically get zero through nine. Similarly for printing, so let's just go ahead and duplicate this, but instead of assigning a value, we will print that value. So I'll say printf, and let's go ahead and format this as an integer, and instead of a new line, I'm just gonna do a space to keep it all on a single line, and then we will access array of i. Finally, at the end, we can just print a new line. This is how you would assign and then read data. As an example, of course, you could do it manually, but this is just going to generate the values for us, zero through nine. Because array is a pointer to an integer, it knows to access the next element and needs to jump four, since an integer takes up four spaces in memory, or four bytes. Now, when you're doing dynamic memory allocation, you are responsible to release that memory when you are done, so you will typically say free, passing in, the variable, the pointer that points to that memory. Now, most likely you will be fine doing this, but if there is a scenario where the memory allocation fails, you can check for that because the pointer will be null. So let's simulate that by passing in some value here that's really large, and then you can check if array is null, printf memory allocation failed and then you might need to do something else with your program or return one saying that we can't continue. So let's try this, see if we get that result. 
and it seems to still work so let's go ahead and just add another nine here and then adding one more nine i was finally able to get it to say memory allocation failed obviously in modern computing most likely this isn't going to happen for average size programs but if you're working on a memory constrained system then that is how you could check to see if the memory allocation was successful now let's talk about how we can grow the size of the array if we wanted to continually append data to this array. So we'll start by clearing out that bad example and I'm going to introduce a count variable. This will come in handy later and keep things organized. So malloc size of int multiplied by our count. So let's say we wanted to introduce an 11th element. So now we don't just have index zero through nine, but we actually have zero through 10. What we could do is create a new pointer this is also going to be an integer pointer and we're just going to call this array2 for now. And we're going to use the realloc function to reallocate memory. This is going to take the first argument being a pointer to some area of memory, the one we already had, in this case array, and then the new size. So let's just say we wanted to increase the count of elements by one, we could say count plus plus, which will easily keep track of how many we are wanting to store. And then we'll say size of an int multiplied by count. So in theory, this should now store 11 elements. However, all of our code beyond this point is working with array, not array two. So what we can do is we could check to see if this new allocation was successful. And if so, we could replace array to point to this new area pointed to by array two. Behind the scenes, this realloc could create new memory or just expand the current memory, and it really doesn't matter what happens behind the scenes. All we know is that for the best safe usage, we will just want to be careful because these could be two separate areas in memory. So it's probably good to update where array points to, to point to the new array to location. But the reason that we didn't just do array here, which although this could work, is by assigning it to a different variable, we have the ability to check to make sure it worked before we do any replacement. So you can say if array two is null, then it was a fail, printf, new memory allocation failed. And now in our scenario, we're just going to stop the execution. So we're just gonna say return one but it is possible that you could still continue the application and just say, hey, the max size has been reached. And in that scenario, you still have the pointer array fully functional beyond this code. So you wouldn't have to return one here. So hopefully that makes sense why I ended up putting these in separate variables. But if everything is good, then we could just say array now is assigned array two. And that'll replace array to point to this new location. And now instead of comparing this against 10, we could compare it against count, which is just going to be cleaner. And we should be able to run this to get zero through 10. And if we went ahead and changed this to say 20, we should get zero through 20. And you can see that there. So having it all in one location is just a convenience thing. But additionally, you might want to keep track of the count because there's a scenario where you might not want to just increase the array by one, but actually do something else such as double the size of the array. This is a pretty common practice where you will have the size of the array and the count of the array where size is how much memory is allocated and count is how much actual data is in the allocated memory. You might not always fill 100% of the allocated memory, so you need a way to keep track of how much total memory you have, even though it's not 100% full. So what we'll do is instead of having a count being 10, we will have a size that is 10. And the count is just going to be how many elements are in the array. And since we start with zero elements being in it, we'll say count is zero. This is going to require us to change some of our code. Specifically, we're not going to use malloc with the count, rather the size. And then down here, when we have count plus plus, what we'll actually do is just double the size. So size multiplied by two and we will use size right here. And checking through here, when we are adding elements, that is when we will say count plus plus. So we're keeping track of how many elements are in the array. And instead of less than 10, we'll just go up until the size. And then when we're actually printing, we will use count because we only wanna print up to the actual data inside of it. 
So I think this is going to be the correct updated code. So give it a run and you get 0 through 19, which is 20 elements. If we only filled half the array, let's say size divided by 2, it'll only fill half of it, but size is still going to be 20. So if down here we printed both of those values, so we'll say size percent i and then count percent i and passing in size and count. Size should be 20 and count should be 10. If we went ahead and started this with size being 20, we're gonna get something a little similar, but now just double the values everywhere. So size is 40, count is 20. So that gets you some practice with allocating and reallocating an array, keeping track of a count and a size. But now I wanna talk about a major benefit of doing this, which is the ability to return data defined locally in a function back to the caller. So that might not make sense right now, but let's go ahead and go through the example because it'll give a warning if you're doing it wrong and that'll help you understand when you should use malloc. Let's say we created a function to generate an array. We'll say generate array and let's go ahead and create an integer array and let's just define it with some initial data, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Then we'll return array. So this will just be returning an int pointer essentially. When we run this we should get a warning. Address of stack memory associated with local variable array returned. And this is basically saying hey you're returning something that's defined locally on the stack and outside of the scope it's not going to exist. So if you ever run into this scenario this is when you should be using malloc. So instead of doing it this way, you could take in a size, have an int pointer called array, and use malloc, passing in the size of an int, multiplied by the size, as we have seen before. And then you, if you wanted, you could check if the array is null. And then let's just go ahead and initialize this data with some basic 0 through 9 stuff. So i is 0, i less than size i plus plus array of i is assigned the value i. Finally, you can return the array. Now when you run it, you shouldn't get a warning. Let's go ahead and try this out. I cleared out main just to keep this simple. And we'll have an int pointer array invoking generate array passing in the size. And because this is going to initialize this with some data, I'll just go ahead and set these to the same value like so. And then we should have an array of size and count 20 that we can work with. So let's go ahead and print this real quick. I'll just make a quick for loop. So i less than count i plus plus print f percent i array of i. And I'll just print a new line at the end here. All right, so let's run this. There we go. And then you'll free this the same exact way. So free array. So that's the basics of working with malloc. And this is really valuable when we have functions that need to return some data that was defined inside of that function. I'm sure there's a lot more we could cover with memory allocation. This is just a basic example of how to get started using it and how to reallocate memory. Let me know if this is helpful. Definitely stay tuned for upcoming videos and be sure to subscribe. Peace out.